Welcome back to Network Africa. Now, as you know, the war on terror is a global one, and one of the worst threats is coming from the Islamic State. That's a group which Boko Haram has pledged allegiance to. President Barack Obama of the United States has vowed to do what he can to block ISIS from establishing itself in Libya, even if the group has managed to penetrate the unstable North African country. I have been clear from the outset that we will go after ISIS wherever it appears, the same way that we went after Al-Qaeda wherever they appeared. And the testament to the fact that we are doing that already is that we took out ISIS, one of ISIS's uh, most prominent leaders in Libya. Uh, we will continue to take actions where uh, you know, we've got a, a clear operation and uh, a clear target in mind. U.S. President Barack Obama, and on that note, you're welcome to our Focus on Burundi segment, which comes up every Wednesday on Network Africa. As you know, President Pierre Nkurunziza has opted to shut out the international community and fix the mess which began in April of last year based on his third-term bid. One of the steps which the president has taken is to ban the use of commercial motorbikes from the center of the capital, Bujumbura. That's in a bid to end the violence in the city. According to Mayor Freddy Mbonimpa, the motorcycle taxis, which are a common form of transport in the city, are being used by criminals to carry out attacks in Bujumbura. As for the international community, the European Union is ready to sanction the East African country even further. The EU could strengthen economic sanctions on Burundi based on the failure of President Nkurunziza to dialogue or accept troops. But President Pierre Nkurunziza has refused to accept an African Union peacekeeping plan, saying it would amount to an invasion. On that note, let's just take you through some of the activities that have gone on on Burundi this week. First of all, as we told you, the use of motorbikes has been banned based on the announcement made by the mayor, Mr. Mbonimpa, and the EU is ready to impose more sanctions based on Burundi's failure or President Nkurunziza's failure to dialogue and accept some troops. And two people have also been killed in a bomb explosion, while a dozen people have been wounded in grenade attacks. For more on an analysis on this situation, we go live to Utah, where Professor of Economics at Weber University and non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, Professor John Mbaku, is standing by. Professor, thank you very much for joining us again on Network Africa. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Now, Professor, is there the, is, is the possibility to, is there a possibility to strengthen, or the this, this step being taken to strengthen sanctions against Burundi, is that the possible way out? Because we've seen this strategy pay off in South Sudan, for instance now that the, there's some negotiation and also unity government formation going on there? Well, the, what we have to be uh, careful about is that um, the success that we are seeing in South Sudan was not based on sanctions alone. Uh, mm -hmm. There were other activities that were taking place along with sanctions. And so in, in the case of Burundi, if there are going to be sanctions, we have to be very careful to understand that uh, the economy in Burundi is already has already deteriorated significantly, and there's a lot of suffering in Burundi. And so if, if sanctions are not uh, uh, targeted very carefully, they could uh, further exacerbate the problem and create more problems for people who live in Burundi. Now, um, if uh, the EU and other uh, governments are interested in imposing sanctions on Burundi, uh, one of the things they must do is that the sanctions must be targeted very carefully, uh, but perhaps more importantly is that the overall uh, uh, objective must be to secure the peace in Burundi. So while, some, uh, while the EU might be considering sanctions, uh, they should also be considering other policy initiatives that can help bring the, uh, achieve peace in Burundi. And one of them would be to encourage the East African countries, uh, the countries of the East African community, to try to find some way to engage in more dialogue with uh, Burundi 
so that they can uh, find a way to get the government of Burundi to accept uh, uh, some kind of peaceful uh, solution yeah. so that the country can start uh, charting a way for more sustainable uh, government in the, in the future. Just uh, imposing sanctions on, on uh, targeted individuals in Burundi is probably not going to have that much effect on uh, the government. What needs to be done is that in addition to the sanctions, yes, there should be other policy initiatives that try to bring the government of Burundi into negotiation with the opposition so that well, the peace can be secured. The, yes. This is uh, uh, based on what we understand, at least the, um, um, what the EU has published on its website. This is just a step in that direction. But speaking of steps, we've seen one that um, um, the, the Burundi authorities have taken this week. For instance, the ban on motorbikes. And analysts even describe the ban on, on motorbikes as almost insignificant in dousing the tension. I'd just like to know your thoughts on that move made by the authorities. Well, uh, the, the, the burning of motorcycles uh, creates a lot of problems for people in uh, Bujumbura and other parts of the country. And that has to do with the fact that the motorbike has emerged as a very important means of transportation for most people. And if you are familiar with Bujumbura, you would realize that it's very difficult to go from the, mm -hmm. the southern part of the uh, um, capital to the north without going yeah. through the city center and uh, motorbikes have been, become very important. But perhaps more important is the fact that uh, if the government is going to ban motorbikes because it believes that motorbikes have become a weapon in the, in the violence that is occurring, then perhaps the next thing they need to do is to ban... Uh, I, I don't know why they haven't banned other instruments of violence, uh, like knives uh, uh, and, and so on and so on. So I think what they are doing is they are just... Uh, 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 trying to uh, engage in band-aid solutions. They are not looking at what the, the actual cr uh, causes of the crisis are. That's what the government should be concentrating on. Yes. The government should be trying to bring together all stakeholders in Burundi, uh, sitting them down and talking with them and finding out exactly why there is so much violence and trying to solve those problems rather than but, engaging in activities that are not going to have very much impact but on professor, that, the situation that's, that's in the one country. thing that we've seen uh, go month after month after month. The President Nkurunziza appears not to be interested in dialogue. We, we know that he shut that down several times, even after the Security Council um, of the United Nations paid him a visit. But my final question is, if the EU actually carries out its threat to strengthen the sanctions against Burundi, how do we know that that gap will not be bridged by some of his supporters, probably that are, um, are AU members, um, AU member states? Well, the, the thing is that uh, if the EU target, uh, the, the, the EU has indicated that it's, it's going to target individuals it believes are responsible for uh, the violence in Burundi and those who are uh, impeding uh, progress in uh, resolving the uh, um, uh, the, cr the crisis in Burundi. Now, one of the problems you have with that is that uh, those individuals are, are people who are uh, um, very wealthy individuals. I mean, someone like the president, for mm -hmm. example, is not some, some individual who is going to suffer significantly yes. if uh, you impose uh, sanctions on, on him as an individual. And so what we need to consider is uh, what is going to happen to the people of Burundi if the government continues to, to, uh, to act with impunity and yes. refuse to negotiate with the opposition. So I think that instead of concentrating only on sanctions alone, what the EU should be doing is, if, if it really wants to help Bur the people of Burundi, is trying to uh, put together some type of uh, 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 group that can come up and negotiate effectively with the government in well, Burundi. And I think that has to, that, the emphasis has to be Professor, placed on the East African community because but, those are the people who are close, close to Burundi and they are the people who can actually influence the government of Burundi 
to engage in uh, 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 negotiations with well, the opposition. Professor, thank you very much for joining us again on Network Africa. We appreciate your time and your input as always. Thank you. Thank you. Focus on Burundi's segment. Stay with us on Network Africa. There's more to come. The Kenya Athletics president steps down temporarily based on bribery allegations.